Okay, so now we're going to take the next step, which is to um, to look at two components together and see how things change uh, in regard to the the mapping of the of the pressure temperature space uh, where you have two phases and um, and also how the pressure volume relationship changes um, at a given temperature. So if we take as an example, I think chapter two discusses uh, specifically the binary ethane heptane, normal heptane, and, and it also indirectly includes the binary methane and some heavier hydrocarbon, which is a little more interesting in a way. That's what I'm going to sketch here. Of course, I'm just drawing cartoons. It's not to scale, but um, so what I've sketched here is a pressure temperature diagram again. And on that diagram, I put the vapor pressure curve of methane and the vapor pressure curve of some heavier hydrocarbon. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and mix together on a arbitrary basis, let's just say 50-50, uh, on a molar basis. So 0.5 moles of methane, 0.5 moles of some high, uh, other hydrocarbon. And what happens to this pressure temperature diagram of the two component system? And so basically what happens is that you get a, not a line anymore, but you get a, a an envelope. We call this an envelope. Okay? And this, uh, this envelope will have a, a, a point up here which is actually a critical point, like the critical point of a pure component. You also have critical points of, of, um, of binary systems. So this is uh, uh, I'm going to have to use different colors here eventually, so so let me just do that now. I'll make this purple, okay? And so the purple is a 50-50, uh, 50, 50, 50 mole percent methane, okay? So inside inside the uh, this envelope inside here and along the lines both along the lines and inside we have two phases vapor and liquid gas and oil if you like okay gas plus oil all right so along along the line itself and inside, you have two phases. Everywhere outside that purple, at any condition outside that purple envelope, it's single phase, all right? So now let's do the following. Let's go through and um, I guess I can use black now. I'm going to go through the same kind of process that we did before on the pressure volume, I'm going to take at some temperature and just change change the uh, pressure. Okay, and then we're going to take and look at what does the pressure volume uh, look like. <coughs> So we go back to blue, and I'll sketch this um, pressure volume over here. Molar volume. I'll use that, or you can, if you fix the number of moles, then you can use volume. So again. If we have this mixture, and this, this will actually change from mixture to mixture, but if we use the purple mixture, there's actually a, a, a limiting volume that if we take that mixture um, you, and you compress it to 10 billion you know, bar, 
the volume is going to kind of approach some number. Okay, so this is the B of that of the 50-50 mixture. Okay, so if we take that 50-50 mixture to a high enough pressure, then it's going to come down like this. Now I'm going to have to, when it hits this, I'm going to have to kind of. And then it hits that down there. I'm just I'm marking kind of the these here. And the bottom of that and the that. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the so if you go to high enough pressure it's gonna be coming down off of this asymptote like that. And then it might bend over a little bit. And then when it hits that pressure there, it's going to, I'm just going to mark it there. Now, with the single component, when it hit that saturation pressure, Mother Nature's kept the pressure constant when you increase the volume. Mother Nature doesn't do that anymore. So what's going to happen is that this thing is going to go, let me break like that down to this pressure here at the bottom of the two phase envelope. So this is the total pressure, I'm sorry, the total volume versus pressure. And then this is just going to move on. Should be continuous, so let's try again, Curtis. Um, and it's going to be going towards some kind of ideal gas law behavior down here. Okay? So this is the total volume versus pressure. Maybe not a very pretty picture, but the point is that it doesn't get stuck on this constant pressure anymore. That's only for pure compounds. Only for pure compounds. Now, on this same figure, I'm going to make a second y-axis and here I'm going to say what percentage when we see two phases when we see two phases what percentage is liquid or oil okay what's the percentage of the total volume that is oil or liquid okay Actually, that's, yeah. Make it green since it's oil. Make that green, it's oil. Okay. And Now I'm going to plot this. Somewhere between these two values here, it's going to be 50%. This is 50%. It appears maybe 100%. Down here, 0%. Okay? So, somewhere in this, in this interval here, you've got to have 50%. So I'm just going to put it right there. No, uh, this is this is not the way I should be doing this. Shouldn't you have the single phase? Yeah, I, I'm going to have to change. I'm going to have to change this thing here around. Um, <coughs> let's see. Okay. Try again. Let's see. Um, okay.
I'm just going to say at, th at this point you've got 50% liquid, okay? Let me just do it with numbers first. Um, at this point here we've got 25% liquid. At this point here we've got 75% liquid. Is that okay? Um, And as we get close to this point, we've got 98% liquid. And down here, if we get close enough to that point, we've got 2% liquid. Okay? So the point is that right here, at the point itself, this is 100% liquid. And at the point here, this point here, you've got 0% liquid. And here we've got 100% liquid. Okay? Now you won't see 100 because you won't actually see the bubble, but you'll, you'll see a bubble appearing as you lower the pressure from here just slightly below you'll see a bubble appearing. If you go down here you'll see single phase coming from below but as you reach this point and you go into the two-phase region, you'll see a liquid appearing, all right? So if you come from below, you'll see a liquid appearing, this second phase, and if you come from above, you'll see a gas appearing. Okay. The 100% liquid point is referred to as what? It's referred to as a bubble point. Because it's the point where a bubble appears. Okay? That's why they call it a bubble point. Kuka point. Um, the point down here is what we refer to as a dew point because that's the point where this little drop of dew or liquid appears. Okay. And that will be the same all along this upper curve. You'll have bubble points. And on the lower curve, you'll have dew points. Okay, so this is our dew point line, and this is our bubble point line. Okay. Okay. Bubble point means that you're at a pressure. If you enter the two-phase region from the bubble point line, as you enter the two-phase region, you will see the appearance of a second phase, and that second phase will be a bubble. If you enter the two-phase region from the red line, anywhere, if you go from this point up, make it red, in this way, or if you come in that way, it doesn't really matter. If you enter the two-phase region, what you will see up here is a liquid dew droplet. Okay? So dew point line and a bubble point line. And the point here, I guess we can go back to our purple. The point here, this is what we refer to as the critical point Okay. For this 50% methane, 50% something else mixture. And what is special about the critical point? It means that if you enter the two phase region from that point, that the two phases, 
whatever phase appears, its properties will essentially be identical with what you have on, at the point. In other words, the two phases that are appearing are almost identical, or are identical, okay? Whereas if we, if we start from the oil right here, if we're, if we look, if we start from the oil here and we enter the two-phase region, the gas that comes out will be lighter, maybe 100 kilograms per cubic meter lighter. If we enter from the gas side right here into the two-phase region, the dew or liquid that appears might be 100 kilo, kilograms per cubic meter heavier than the gas, okay? So there's this contrast in the two properties of the phases. But at the critical point, the two phases you see just inside will be essentially identical, okay? And that's called the critical point. Okay, I need to, it's going to get a little bit messy with all this stuff going on, so I'll try to, I'll try to make a 98% a methane, 2% CN, okay, what's it going to look like? Well, it's going to look quite similar to methane, but it's also going to have an envelope. It's going to have a critical point. Okay, so that's 98% mole percent methane. So the curve, it's going to be close to the methane vapor pressure curve, but it splits into an envelope. It has all the same characteristics. On the top side is a bubble point. This is the bubble point line here. And the bottom side is the dew point. Inside you have two phases. Okay? If we go to a, I'm going to make it, what should I, color should I make it? Uh, pink, there we go. 2%, uh, 2, percent, two mole percent methane, okay? I'm getting where I can't, I'm not writing anything right here. Let's see here. Two mole percent methane. Well, it's mainly going to be 98% CN, so it's going to be down here. Again, an envelope. It's going to have bubble points along here and dew points on the underside. Okay? And then if we connect all of the critical points, we got this one, we got this one, if we just connect all the critical points, like that. This is called the critical locus. The locus of critical points. Critical locus. And only inside that critical locus will you find two phases. You can always find some mixture that will be two phase. Okay? So inside that, between the vapor pressure of methane, the vapor pressure of CN, and this critical locus, inside that envelope, you can always find some mixture that splits into two phases. Okay? So I'll just draw it down. I'll redraw it down here. So you've got this. And that. So we've got two phases for some, you have to find it, some mixture of the compounds. Okay. 
if you have a given mixture, it'll be two phases inside the pressure temperature envelope. And out here, everywhere else out here, it'll be single phase. For any percentage, any percentage. You cannot find a mixture outside that <laughs> vapor pressure, vapor pressure dash line. Outside that, you can't find a mixture that will be two phase. Okay. We're not there yet. That's looks like the way I'm at the rate I'm going, it'll be Thursday before you hear about that. Okay. Like the, we can find a mixture of these two components outside this phase and the that can be in a single phase. Any mixture, every mixture, all mixtures will be single phase out there. Pure methane, 50 50, 98 2. 280. Any mixture, including pure compounds, will be single phase outside that region. Okay? You can't find two phases. You can try, but you can't find. Okay. Now, I'm going to mess with your minds now. I'm going to mess with your brains. If I haven't already started. <laughs> okay? I'm going to mess with your mind now. Last chance to, for questions on this before you, your mind starts feeling like cottage cheese. Okay. okay. We're going to go back here to the single component. Okay. We're going to go back to the single component. And I'm going to ask you a question. At one atmosphere and 100 degrees C, is water, H2O, and I'm going to take a raise of hands. How many think it's a liquid? Okay. How many think it's a liquid? Got one. How many think it's a vapor? Got one. And then we got like 1% with an opinion and 98% without an opinion. You realize I'm going to mess with you, otherwise you would have, everybody would be raising, okay? So you don't know. Is that what we're saying? You didn't raise, so you don't know. It's both. I think it's both. You think it's both? That's true. Okay. I take my kettle of water, and I turn it on, and it starts, you know, going. I put the thermometer in, and it hits 100 degrees C. I've now achieved 100 degrees C at one atmosphere, and I've got one liter of boiling water there, and you tell me you don't know? You tell your friends, oh, I don't, what is this? What's your name? Uh, I mean. Your roommate says, I mean, I mean, what is this? He says, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it's water. I think it's, it's <laughs> liquid. Yeah, it's a liquid. Yeah. No, 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 I'm not sure. I mean, you know, if you've got a girlfriend or a, a, a a friend friend or whatever, you know, we want to impress, you're in trouble. Because, you know, it's right there. It's one liter of liquid. It's right there. Now, maybe a bubble of something, steam pops out, that's not going to help your case. I'm not sure what it is. Okay? Now, if we have a thousand liter container and all we see is this fog in there, it kind of looks foggy or something, and you see one little drop of liquid on, on, the, on, the, on the window, then you could say, oh, there's two phases. It's got both phases, right? But what if that little drop of liquid just happens to disappear, you know? You know, I hit it, and then all of a sudden, those molecules jump back into the steam, and I've got a 1,000-liter container of, of, of water. You don't know what it is, okay? So, so there's a problem here in phase definition. I, I hope you understand that, because you... If you just look into a container and you essentially see 
one phase, in case of water, you don't really know what's there, right? Because I could have your container with steam or liquid water without that bubble or drop being there, and it would just look like a single phase, and you would say, oh, it's, I'm not sure what it is. That's what you, your answer would be, I don't know what it is. You'd have to measure the, some physical property like viscosity. Oh, the viscosity is you know, 0.5 centipoise. Ah, that's a liquid. Or the viscosity is 0.03 centipoise. Oh, that's steam. Okay? But you wouldn't know by just visual inspection what it is. Now I'm going to ask you, what is liquid water at 100 degrees C and 10 bar? Hmm? You say liquid, okay, argue. I don't agree. It's just a container, you're looking at it, it's, there's one phase. You don't know the pressure and temperature there, I mean, you, you, you know. But you say liquid, okay? Does anybody say vapor? <laughs> if you say vapor, you're not going to impress anybody. I mean, you, you might be right, as right as as him, but we say, okay, that's a liquid. Why do you say it's a liquid? Because at 100 degrees C, the, this liquid, uh, the, the water vaporizes when we, when we have one atmosphere, but we, if we increase the pressure, then it will, it will come. This, uh, the, the single drop of uh, vapor that forms at one atmosphere at this boiling point will convert into liquid. Okay, so you, you say it's liquid because as you move upwards, you have a liquid when you leave the line. That's what you're saying, right? Okay, so we're gonna, that's his argument. All right, so we give you a check mark for that. And you keep going the pressure and you have the same argument, right? We go up to here to 10,000 bar, we got the same argument, okay? But now I'm going to, at this pressure here, I'm going to start heating this stuff. Okay? And I'm going to move over here. What is it now? Huh? You still say liquid. Anybody can disagree at any time. He's, he's on the same path. And what if I go here? Probably liquid. Probably. They, you're out. Okay. I want liquid or vapor. I just want to know what it is. Our reference was the critical point. Um, now, you, now you're making up. Now you're making up rules. You're a politician. You're just making up the rules. No, really, the critical point. The critical point. I don't. I don't know anything about the critical point. I'm way up here. Why is the critical point related to the liquid? I don't know. You say at the critical temperature, it's a liquid below the critical we temperature. We don't have the line which was our reference. It stopped. Well, I don't know. I mean, I. Are you going to say anything? I haven't heard anything from you, Bill. Uh, it can be. No, 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 no. Liquid or vapor? I only give you two choices. Okay, we don't know. Okay, and what if we go over here? Huh? Vapor. Now he says vapor, and we go down in pressure. Vapor, vapor, down here, vapor, okay, and then we can lower the temperature again, vapor, lower the temperature, lower the temperature, and then we enter the, right here, we enter the line, okay, and we change, we try to change the, the basically you, you start seeing a liquid, right? Okay. So now, where do we flip from being a liquid to a vapor? You're saying you need to know the critical temperature of it? But if you, if you say that, the properties, the properties here and the properties there, you call it liquid on the one side and vapor on the other. So what's the difference? Their properties are identical. Okay? 
the properties are identical. And as an engineer, if the properties are identical and you're doing engineering up here, the viscosities are the same, the densities are the same, there's one phase, all you care about for engineering calculations is what? What's the viscosity? What's the density? What's the thermal, whatever, you know, thermal properties you need for designing a, some kind of engineering component, pipeline, something else. Basically viscosity and density. Okay? You don't need to know if it's a vapor or liquid. You don't care, right? And you don't really have any formal definition. I mean, you guys agree, critical temperature it becomes vapor to liquid. But nothing's happening at that, at that condition. It's identical on each side of that, so it's your arbitrary definition. I could say, well, if it's 300 kilograms per cubic meter, okay, if it's less than that, I call it a gas, and if it's greater than that, I call it a, a density. That might happen over here, okay? 300 kilograms per cubic meter. That's my definition because I say if it's less than that, it behaves like a gas, and if it's more than that, it behaves like a liquid. So you'd have some, some map of that where the density is 300 kilograms per cubic meter. That's my definition. So the point is, at the end of the day, is that unless you see two phases, unless you see two phases, you can't define if it's a liquid or a vapor phase. And if you see two phases, then what you can say is you have a lighter phase and a heavier phase because of the gravity, right? So you need to have two phases to define, to, to rigorously, properly define. Okay. You need two phases in equilibrium to define or label phases. as vapor and liquid. And even then, it's basically, it could be two liquids. I mean, what's a light liquid and a heavy liquid, or, okay? But basically, to give separate labels or specific labels, you need to have two phases. And when you have only one phase, you can use arbitrary or well-founded definitions, okay? But they're somewhat arbitrary because I think 300 kilograms per cubic meter or 0.1 centipoise is as good as any definition you can come up with, okay? But arbitrary um, definitions. To label as vapor-like and liquid-like. Okay. What do we mean by like in terms of density or viscosity? Essentially, compressibility. Okay. And for density, you know, well, again, you can, I would prefer using density or viscosity. Or you could use this arbitrary critical temperature. Okay. So the arbitrary definitions, they could be critical temperature, less than or, equal or, or greater than. Um, so this would be liquid and vapor. If your temperature 
is greater than the critical, it's vapor. If it's less than critical, it's liquid. So here, along the line, we can readily define the phases, okay? Because all we have to do is we have to move into the, into the, we have to create a volume that creates two phases. And then we can say that phase is sitting on top of that phase. We'll call the light phase vapor and the, light, and the heavy phase liquid, okay? That we can do. But if you get outside that line, or actually even on the line where you don't see the second phase, then you don't really, you don't, you can't really do, you can't label it. This point here. Well, this this one up here. That's the one I drew here first. It's it comes down like that. That's that's the, at the critical temperature. So it it comes down, it goes flat, and then it goes down towards yeah, towards I, ideal gas. If you the, the single phase you mentioned at the top of pressure volume, uh, pressure volume up here. Yeah, here you have written single phase. Yeah, which phase it would be? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I, you, I don't. I mean, phase labels don't really help us. I mean, we don't really use phase labels for computational engineering, okay? I mean, in reality, you, you do, but... Um, so if, if I choose uh, 300 kilograms per cubic meter as, as a... Uh, let's say that what we could do is we could choose... We could say that, well, the density here is 350 kilograms per cubic meter at the critical point, okay? So what I could do then is that I could take and find the pressures and temperatures above there along this line, we have the same density. The density is equal to the density at the critical point. And then that would be my demarcation. If you're to the left of that, it's vapor, and to the right of that, liquid, or vice versa. To the left of it, liquid, and to the right of it, vapor. So that could be my liquid, you know, out here, and my vapor over here. It could be my definition of liquid and vapor phase. You prefer to use, if it's just the temperature is, is less than critical temperature, you call it a bubble point. And to the right is the dew point. I think if you take the component, um, let's say at this pressure here, at the critical pressure, and you take the temperature to very, 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 very high, I mean like ultra high, what will happen to the density? If you just heat it to have 
Hmm? Eventually, it's going to decrease, right? Down to some low value. You're calling it a liquid. It's behaving like a vapor. Or I could come over here at this temperature here, and I could take the pressure to 10 to the, a, Google, a Google bar, right? 10 to the 100th bar. And the density is going to be something like, like it is when it reaches B, you know? Very liquid-like, almost incompressible. But you're going to be calling it a vapor. So, so there is a problem. So the concept of liquid-like and vapor-like is actually a much more, to me, attractive definition of, of a single phase. If you absolutely have to call it something, you can say, well, it behaves like a liquid, it behaves like a vapor. It's a user definition. That's exactly it. But if you go to all the professors around, you know, teaching chemistry and thermodynamics and petroleum engineering, you ask them, you know, say, well, what, you know, what's the definition of a vapor and liquid in single phase? They're going to give you some definitive answer, like came straight from, you know, where. But it didn't. It came from what their teachers taught them or what they think. Or Curtis has got, you know, the critical density. He's hung up on that. He, so. The point is that there is not a formal definition. If you see two phases, then you can certainly label them. Phase one, phase two, the one's lighter than the other. You can call it a vapor liquid, or you can call it light liquid, heavy liquid, whatever you want to call it. So the air we're breathing, is it gas or not? <laughs> okay, you can. Now, I wanted to kind of highlight that before we start talking about real petroleum mixtures with phase diagrams that we're going to look at, okay? Um, and the reason is that, as I mentioned to you last Thursday, there are some, there are some reasons governments own what you call gas or own what you call oil, okay? And in that case, they're looking for a definition, okay? It can be Curtis's definition, it can be somebody else's definition, but the SBE doesn't have a definition per se, okay? So someone's going to have to come up with a formal definition because when it talks about ownership, it starts making a lot of difference, okay? The Saudis, they'll let you own the gas, the oil coming out of the gas, and the, the Arab Emirates, They'll let you own the oil coming out of the oil, okay? Well, you have to define what's a gas reservoir, what's an oil reservoir, in order to know who to pay what, okay? So in some cases, you actually have to make some formal definition, whether it's yours or mine, you know, and, and this is a, an issue. So I wanted to, to bring this up for the simpler systems before we get into something that's so complex that, okay? That's it. See you on Thursday, 9 o'clock. <laughs>